Good evening, everyone. Back again with another Thursday Night Live. I hope everyone's had a great week. This week, our guest is Norm Mufasa, who... Norm Mustafa, sorry, who will be joining us. Hopefully, she gets in quite fast. As always, it's the, the fun part of uh, of this happening. So hopefully she gets in. Noor is currently out playing in France. And she'll be able to tell you a bit more about that. So I don't want to give too much about her before before the live. We've just accepted her in, so hopefully she should be coming on in the next couple of seconds. Yes. Yes. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm not too bad, thank you. How's your day been today? Is it a training day or an off day? No, nah, training day. We had training in the morning. So now after training, just been chilling. Oh, nice. Do you live alone out there? Yeah. Ah, nice. How's living alone? No, nah, it's good. It's good. It's, uh, of course, you have to take more responsibility living by yourself, but it's good. It's good. Ah, how long does it take you to get from where you live to your training facility? Is it a nice journey is it, or is it quite a long journey? No, nah, it's 10 minutes, 10 minutes. Oh, that's all right then. Yeah, no, nah, it's you nice. Walk Some, drive? <laughs> sometimes walk, sometimes drive. It depends on how I feel. Depends on the weather as well, I'm guessing, right? Yeah, of course. <laughs> so just for anyone who doesn't doesn't know you or doesn't know much about you, I would like you to describe yourself as a player in three words. Okay. I'd say I'm a strong, physical striker that has a great shot. I love that. That has a great shot. The co- you got to come with the confidence. Of course. So a lot of people have been asking and we sent some, we got the uh, questions in. So yeah. a lot of people asked, when you was younger, how did you get into football? Was there a direct route for you or was there quite of a, a background story? So I have always loved football since young. Always like watch football uh, on TV, my uncles, my family, everyone has been involved in football. So I've always had so much love for football. Yeah. So growing up, there was a, where I was, where I grew up, there wasn't a lot of girls playing football. So yeah. I saw the boys playing on the streets. So I, I was like, yeah, I'm going to play with you. So yeah. I went to play with the boys and then slowly got into more uh, organized football with that team. And the rest is history. So how did street football essentially sort of help you develop as a player? Because I... I think I grew up with like street football. I think is such a key key part of growing up. So how do you think that made you develop as a player? No, I think playing with the boys also that um, benefited me a lot in my football further on. It made me more physical, made me more resilient. So if yeah. someone pushed me, it wasn't I got used to it. Yeah. So and playing on the football as well, like you have to be technical. A lot of yeah. working with your feet. So even though now I'm big and tall, yeah, I think one of my key assets is my feet. Because yeah. uh, from the street, a lot of technical dribbling, quick feet, quick playing, that I took that with me. Okay. I was going to say, obviously you mentioned it, you're, you're quite tall. Obviously you're a lot taller than me. I'm only five foot two. So you're like, literally, I, I would look up to you. <laughs> <laughs> but when you come up against defenders... What would you What would you imagine their th- their first thought is when they see you because you're quite tall? No, I've heard this too. So I know what they're <laughs> gonna say. They're gonna say, "Oh, she's big." Yeah. <laughs> Do you like to score with your head as well? Obviously, you must have an advantage being being a bit more taller. Of course, of course, I I have the advantage, but I need to work on my head a bit more. <laughs> to be honest, so you'd rather score with your feet than your head. Yeah, but no, of course, that's something that I always work on, adding on to my game, getting better with my head. Because, like you said, I have an advantage. Like, I don't even need to jump sometimes and <laughs> get to the ball before they do. Uh, yeah, if, if me and you went up against each other in the air, I would have no chance. No chance <laughs> at all. I'd walk away. I'd be like, yeah, have it. Take it. It's yours. <laughs> So living out in France, can you can you speak French or have you had to learn the language or try and pick it up? Uh, I was reading French in school. Okay. 
So I had some basis of French. And then obviously when I was at West Ham, I yes. had Awa Sisoko, Kenzo yeah. Adali, they were speaking French. So I picked up a lot from there too. So I had, when I came here, I had the base. And oh, now, now I like understand everything. I can make myself understandable. Like the yeah. coach, he speaks French and he don't need to translate. I understand yeah. everything he said. So in the beginning, it was an adjustment for sure. Yeah. Uh, but like on the pitch, you know, oh, it's left, right go press this this yeah. but like outside football like going to the store or going to a restaurant that's what's our adjustment then but with time you get used to it and you learn more yeah definitely so when you first came over did you know well when you first went over to i'm saying it like i'm in france too <laughs> <laughs> when you first went over to france did you know any of the girls at la Havre or was it literally like a pretty new slate new team new friends I, to me i didn't know them personally yeah, but like I know people that knew them, and like from other people that I got in contact with, talked to yeah. before, went there, and like I had the picture, and like people knew who I was when I got there. Yeah, so it it was alright, and all the girls were very nice, very very welcoming, and so I had no problems getting into the team. To be honest, was you nervous about moving over to France? Um, you moved over by yourself, right? So yeah. Was you nervous about doing that? How did you feel? Because you're you're still very young as well, so it must have been quite a a big step and a big decision to make as well. Uh, I would say, of course, there's a bit of ner like always a bit nervous. But yeah. I feel like the when I, the when I got most nervous was when I moved to England by myself. Okay. Because I moved to England by myself as yes. well. So when I moved to France, I was like more ready. I was like, oh, I already know how the process is and stuff. The only thing I was most nervous, like not really nervous about, but was the language, just getting used yeah. to the language more. But other than that, uh, I wasn't really that nervous, to be honest. So you've obviously spoken about briefly, you, you had some time over at West Ham. What was it like playing in the WSL when it seemed like you built some really strong friendships with the girls while you were at West Ham as well? So what was it like there for you? Now, of course, West Ham was a great experience, and I have so much love and respect for Matt, Matt Beard. Yeah. So much love and respect for that guy. He brought me over. There's a lot of, unfortunately, we didn't continue to work uh, for the rest half of the season. But now, of course, I enjoyed my time at West Ham, and uh, all the girls were nice there, too. I built friendships that I'll have for life. And uh, no, it's nice, uh, very, I only can speak positively about that. You spoke earlier about like Hawa, and I'm guessing she's still someone you're in you're in contact with, and she's someone yeah. that you you still speak to. Who would you say when you were at West Ham were like your your top three, if you had to uh, choose, or you were I'd, closest with? I'd say Hawa for sure. I'd yeah. say Alicia. Me and Alicia, Alicia was close. We always yeah. used to hang out outside football, do stuff, and uh, I'd say. It's hard. There are a few girls, but I'd say those main two were like the ones. Everyone, I had a good relationship with everyone. Everyone yeah. was nice, had like everything, no problems. But I think me and those two like clicked the best. Definitely. How important is it to have good relationships, not just on the pitch but off the pitch as well? Again, going back to you were you were living there by yourself. You didn't have, let's say, direct. Um, friends at the time that you could have like gone and seen and you didn't have family there so how important was it for you to make them really um solid and meaningful friendships while you were while you're at your club no of course like when you move to a different country and stuff to a new team like that team becomes your family like you yeah. see those girls more than you see your family so that becomes like your family and friends like your close circle so of course uh, I think it's important for like your well-being to also like have someone to not just be at home in isolated then go to training go back yeah. home see friends talk to them it's like shutting off from football too like just going out grabbing something to eat or just having a conversation it's very important definitely what was your sort of days off what would they look like so away from football now when you had a day off what was like yes we could do this or let's go and do this what was like your go-to uh, 
the thing is when I was in like in the beginning when I came to West Ham it was lockdown yeah so there wasn't a lot to do but like yeah. later on on the week uh week uh like of the off days going to central london go get something good to eat go shopping just relax to recover stuff like that nice what um what is be your favorite place to go to eat what's like your go to food if you had to have like a cheat meal i'd say to be honest i miss nando's <laughs> i miss nando's <laughs> One thing I wish they had here is Nando's. I uh, I like to be honest. Sometimes I used to eat too much Nando's. <laughs> but, but that's not that unhealthy, to be fair. Yeah, but yeah, Nando's for sure. What well, What's your order at Nando's? A uh, butterfly chicken. Uh, but me, but me, I can hear me, the me. way you're saying it. I can hear that um, you miss it. <laughs> so much, so much. You, I bet you'd be the sort of person to make a trip back over to England just to go just to I'm, go there. I'm planning it. <laughs> When, whenever I get two, three days up, I'm gonna go over just to eat Nando's. Come back, not to see any of the West Ham girls or any of the girls that no, play in, course, in the WSL. Of course, <laughs> of, course, of course, we can squeeze them in, but Nando's, Nando's for sure. <laughs> so we've um also had a few questions in, and as they're scrolling through as well, I'm trying to catch them as they come in. But someone asked, who was your footballing idol when you were growing up? So who did you look up to? I think yeah, a lot of people know the answer to this because I've said it a lot of times, but Zlatan Ibrahimovic, for yeah. sure. Zlatan Ibrahimovic, I looked up to him a lot as a kid. Uh, the what he's done for Swedish football, for yeah. everything he has achieved and all the obstacles he overcame to become the player is to where he is today. It was very inspiring. And I wanted, to, like, I looked up to that a lot and I wanted to be like that. And put Zlatan... It's not that I'm much side. I really liked Ronaldinho. Yeah. Ronaldinho, like, when I saw him playing, it made me happy. Like, it made me feel like, oh, football. Like, the thing he did with the ball. Oh, it's frozen. Hopefully it comes back. You're back. Yeah. So, those two players, for sure. Yeah. Definitely, definitely. I think Ronaldinho, I remember myself growing up and I think him and the whole Brazilian team were, were a team you'd sort of look at and yeah. the things they could do with a football so effortlessly Crazy. was absolutely in incredible to say the least. Were there any um, female footballers that you looked up to or as you sort of started playing more and started watching other teams, obviously you'd do like player analysis, team analysis, when you'd, yeah. when you'd sign pro and you've got your pro contracts, were there any sort of players that you picked up on and you thought, oh, wow, like, I, I like what she does or she's a really good player? One player particularly that I looked up to and tried to add on to what she did to my game was Bethany England. Yeah. Bethany England, I used to, like, look at videos of her, how she moves, how she plays, and that's a top top striker that I like I look up to and, like we played yeah. against in, like in person even uh, so no of course I think there are so many good players in the WSL that you look at and you get inspired they want to become like for example Amy uh, Dema uh, yeah. all the goals she scores she's a goal machine and of course I want to put myself in a position where I'll become like that scoring goals for fun and uh, no of course there's a lot of good players that you with more time, you see them, you get inspired by them. Definitely. That, and I it think... doesn't have an, I, I like, it needs to be like a, it can be one of, like, Hopefully you see someone can... work. Yeah. Uh, you can be someone you see on the pitch working extremely hard and that inspires you too. Yeah, a hundred percent. I think the two players that you pointed out there, I was actually quite surprised that you said Beth England, not because... I don't rate her as a player. I think she is an incredible... I was pleasantly surprised, I should say. Um, yeah. Because sometimes I feel like she, she's a player that can potentially get overlooked. But as, as you speak about her and as you say, like she is an incredible player. For example, yeah. last night she, she came on the pitch and yeah. within 10 or so minutes of being on, she came and she scored and she's a, a game changer for me. So it's nice, to, it's nice to hear that other players like look up to her because I 
feel like sometimes a lot of players do go under the radar because of let's say bigger names or people who are in the, in the spotlight a lot more so um, yeah. yeah I think you'd name two phenomenal players there and naturally Vivian Miedemar she she scores goals like it's going out of fashion for fun for fun <laughs> that's exactly it when when you're playing yourself and you're up against a defender what goes through your mind what's your initial thought are you sort of the player that will always drive drive at a player and take them on or will you stop and hold off the play and try and beat them and be a bit skillful with it or will you move the ball on how would you describe yourself as a as so a i think i I think I'm versatile. Like, of course, my my size my size helps me a lot. I can hold yeah. off any defender. Uh, so, whoever you want, I love that. I'll hold off, off anyone. I'll, I'll <laughs> hold them off and play the ball easy. But also, like I said, from my uh, from my childhood when I used to play on the streets, that made my technical abilities good too. Yeah. So. I don't have a, like I don't have any problems going against a player, running against them, doing a step over. So, nah, boy, I think I can do most things. Definitely. Who's the hardest player you've ever come up against in a one v one? You can name a couple if if there's more than one. Naturally, there as we say, there's a lot of incredible players out there, so it might be hard to to numb it uh, down to one. Of course, one player, uh, to be honest, I was hard to go against. Yeah. I was a tough player to go against. Uh, in training, sometimes she used to piss me off. <laughs> <laughs> but it was good. And uh, then, who's there? Some good players. Uh, I remember we played Chelsea in a, and who was it? What's her? Uh, Millie Bright. Millie Bright is big. She's tall like against. you. Yeah. Uh, no, there's a, good, a lot of good, like, defenders to go through. But, like, to be honest, when I step on the pitch, I don't think, of, oh, this is, uh, I'm going to go, I'm going against this player. Yeah. I'm thinking of her as any other player. Yeah. Uh, so, no. So, there are a lot of good players. But, yeah, I'd say those two. Definitely. And away from football, I'm always keen to hear, do you have, like, any other passions, any other... Obviously, you're a talented footballer, but do you have any other like talents or things that you like to do when when you're not playing football? To be honest, football is a, like such a big part of our lives. But like, yeah. fam family is important for me. Family is extremely important, and family for me comes over everything. So yeah. when I'm when I'm not doing football, I like to spend time with family, friends, and yeah, I think those like that's for me outside football is very important. Definitely. Do you get to see them often? Obviously, uh, them not being in France and you being in France? Not as much as I would want, but uh, whenever I get the opportunity to go, they, I go, they came over sometimes. So, and it's okay. It's okay. Yeah. And are your family back in, what country are they in? I don't want to say. Sweden. Sweden. I was going to say, are they in Sweden? And then I was like, I don't yeah. want to say it and be wrong. Yeah, no, they're in Sweden. They're in Sweden. I've um I've never been to Sweden before, so how would you describe it? What what how would you sell it to me if I was to go there on holiday? Do you like do you like snow? Yeah. Do you like the cold? Uh, well, I wrap up and I go to watch women's football matches in <laughs> in the cold, so I don't really have a choice if I like it or not. I think Sweden in the summer is beautiful. Yeah. In the summer, like it never goes gets dark. Oh wow! So yeah, it's like four in the morning and it's still light outside. Uh, no, I like Sweden. In the, I love Sweden in the summer. Sweden in the summer is beautiful. You can do a lot of stuff. Uh, Sweden is a beautiful country too, with a lot of like, and um, uh, like sceneries, like a lot of trees, a lot of water. It's very nice places to go. Uh, so yeah, I'd say go in summer if you don't like the cold. I don't like <laughs> the cold. I lo I don't like the snow. So I'd say summer to sell it to you. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And obviously, you've you've represented Sweden at, at under under nineteens level. What is it like when you go into the to, into the international camps and you're training with different girls your age and all from the the same home home nation? What what's that like for you? No, of course, it's a incredible feeling and it's something that all player players strive to to get to. So of course, it's a nice feeling seeing the girls. Uh, 
learning from them too. It's like every time you step on the pitch, you learn something new. Yeah. So different experiences, different abilities. Of course, it's a nice feeling, and you're all there representing your country. So there is not no better feeling than that. Definitely. What would you say are your goals as a player, um, both for you out in the hub and you also for for your national team going forward? Do you, do you have like sort of set goals in your head? Do they change all the time, or is there things that are that are there as like a common? No, of course. One goal is always try to get better. Yeah. And the main focus now with the hub is to uh, win the league. Yeah. We're at top of the table. We we're playing good. Uh, we just continue doing like we're doing, working hard as a team. I think we have the great opportunity to win the league. So that's the main focus right now. And with the next team, of course, always you want to look to become one of the players in the first team. Yeah. So, of course, that's a dream and a goal I have. And I work towards that every day. And when the time is right, it will happen. Yeah, definitely. There's a lot of young females who not only watch yourself, but watch footballers everywhere. And they're always asking for, for advice from people who are essentially living the dream that they want to fulfill. So what would your advice be to, to young players, boys and girls who are pushing to try and try and live the dream that you're living? Uh, I'd say for me, myself, that helped me is believing in yourself. Believing in yourself, no matter what anyone says, even if someone say, "Oh, you can't make it. You're not good enough." This and that. If you in yourself believe that you can, it doesn't matter who says what. Definitely. And second, you have to enjoy it. If you don't enjoy, it's no reason doing it. Yeah. So you have to you have to have love for the game. You have to love doing what you're doing. Because yeah. if you if you don't want to go to training and you you just go to training just because you're not gonna it's not gonna benefit you and uh, the third working hard yeah it's cliche but that's how you get somewhere working hard keeping your head down working hard and it will pay off definitely and i can only imagine um we've also got this question in as well which i i think's a great question to ask as as a footballer you you do have to work hard exactly what you've just said and there are always sacrifices that you have to make to to get where you want to be and maintain where you're at. Were there any sacrifices that you had to make either growing up or or now just to get to where you are? Of course, like if you want, like for me, myself, and I think a lot of football players uh, would agree on is you sacrifice a lot of time uh, off the pitch. Like yeah. you don't have enough time, like you don't have a lot of time to see family. You don't mm -hmm. have a lot of time to see friends or like do other stuff. So you sacrifice time from them and uh, I think that's a big thing like if you're not willing or if you don't want to t do those sacrifices it's going to be hard but like if you really want football and that's what you really want you make sacrifices like that and also for me uh, a sacrifice was moving to a different country 18 years old yeah. I was 18, moving to England all by myself. That's a sacrifice, yeah. leaving my home, leaving my comfort zone, my friends. Where I, uh, so that was a sacrifice too. So I think you make sacrifices all the time. Yeah. And as you just said, you, you left home at 18 and you've moved around and you've been a few places. Where would you say has been your favorite place to live? I really enjoyed England, but I really enjoyed France too. So... Uh, it's a hard question because you can take good you back? Are you back? I'm yes. Back. <laughs> so yeah, so, France or England is hard to decide. Yeah, but to be honest, I like England a bit more. Because of Nando's. <laughs> <laughs> I've um... I've actually been to La Havre. I went for the Women's World Cup. Yeah. Um, because some of the some of the games were were in La Havre, so it's really nice there. It's quite quiet, though. Would you say? It's or quiet. It's from quiet. what I it's saw, small. anyway. No, for sure, it's quiet. It's small. It's like you can walk or like take a scooter everywhere. Uh, 
But no, I think football, like, as a community, everyone, like, supports the team. And, yeah. like, oh, nice. it's, uh, yeah, it's a lot of love for the team. People come out, watch the men's game, the women's game. And, like you said, the the pitch that you went to watch the game, that's where we play our games yeah. in the weekend. So we have good uh, facilities. We have people supporting us. Yeah, it's a small city, but that keeps you focused, too. Not many distractions. Like, yeah, London. It was. It's a big city. Like you can have a lot of distractions, but here Definitely. it's just focusing on football. Because it's so small and it's so community led, like you said. Do you do you get noticed quite often or not really? I'm always yeah. in, actually like intrigued to know as a female footballer. Do you get noticed when you're when you're out and about? Sometimes it happens. No, of course, I can't tell you every time I walk out that happens, but here and there yeah. it happens. So, of course, it's it's a nice feeling, someone coming up, like, one of, the other day, a young girl was walking with her mom, she came up, and, you know, of course, it's nice. That's amazing. How how does it make you feel, like, as you say there, like, a, a young girl coming up to you and noticing you and, and wanting to say hello to you, how does that make you feel, like, your parents, and you must be so proud of yourself? No, of course, it's a very nice feeling, and you just were like at that moment you remember yourself in that position when you saw a player. Sometimes you might be shy to go up, but at yeah. the end of the day, they're just normal people like you and me. So, so no, of course, it's a very nice feeling, humbling, very nice. I c I can only imagine. I think one of the most beautiful things in the women's game across women's football is the connection between supporters and the players I think is something that's that's extremely special and something that makes the women's game completely different across the board in sport I think the connection that fans and players have is is something that that is extremely special no for sure definitely and last question before I let you go where would you like to see yourself in five years time in five years' time, I'd like to see myself in one of the top clubs in Europe. Uh, established myself, uh, made my made a name for myself in women's yeah. football. Uh, uh, playing in the women's national team for Sweden, and just keep growing as a person, as a player, and just getting better and better every day. Amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for joining me on the live. It's been so great to get to know you and to share your story and to find out how much you love Nando's. <laughs> um, so if you, 100%, when you come to England, we will go for a Nando's. <laughs> 100%. Thank you so much for having me. No worries. Have a lovely evening you and too. good luck for the rest of the season. Fingers crossed uh, for you, hoping yourself and Lahav win, win that title. Thank you so much. Take care. No worries. Bye. See you later. Bye.